Because of their polyunsaturated structure, characterised by a readily reactive double bond, these oils are very prone to oxidation, even without cooking. This study found high rates of oxidation within walnut oil occurred within days, and consumption of oxidised oil leads to oxidation of lipoproteins within our blood, lipoproteins that can deliver oxidation stress throughout our arteries. Compare the blood oxidation levels after consumption of a low oxidised oil to that of a highly oxidised oil. Understand that oxidation within our circulation is a cause of heart disease. And if you understand that, you can see why seed oils could be a problem. You see, they contain something called phytosterol, or plant sterol, which you can think of as fake plant cholesterol. As you can see, they're near identical to cholesterol, but not quite. Similar enough to be absorbed by the body in place of cholesterol, but different enough to not work the same. Basically, phytosterols interfere with the normal biochemical processes that use cholesterol. The highest concentration of these plant sterols is found within seed oils, especially rice bran, corn and rapeseed. And another significant contributor of these plant sterols in our diet, simply due to the volume consumed, is cereal. And while our body tries to reject plant sterols, some does get through about 1% of what we consume actually gets incorporated into our tissues. And one of the tissues this fake plant cholesterol gets into is your arteries. And it's probably no surprise that when it does, it's associated with premature, severe cardiovascular disease. Proof of that was provided when researchers performed a biopsy of the aorta of a 33-year-old male with premature, severe cardiac disease and detected plant sterols. And this is not an isolated finding. These three papers from 2005, 2011 and 2015 all reported plant sterols were detected in diseased arteries. Interestingly, it's likely that these plant sterols also contribute to the crystals found in atherosclerosis. They may not, in fact, be made of cholesterol. Understand that you're not looking here at crystals directly but rather the space where they used to be before they were dissolved in processing. And it's entirely possible, and I would argue likely, that one source of these crystals is phytosterol or plant sterol. You see, being almost identical to cholesterol, plant sterols readily form crystals, crystals which are difficult to differentiate from those formed by cholesterol. Remember these foam cells, the supposed supply of cholesterol? Well, while foam cells don't like to release their cholesterol, they're only too happy to spit out phytosterol or plant sterols. This makes phytosterol a much more likely contributor to these crystals. Observe how foam cells or macrophages are only too happy to store cholesterol <coughs> compared to plant sterols. And plant sterols, which may form these crystals, might also be supplied by degraded red blood cells. For not only does the outer membrane of red blood cells contain more free cholesterol than any other cell in the body, it also contains plant sterols. The consumption of plant foods, especially seed oils, has been repeatedly shown by research to result in plant sterol accumulation within red blood cell membranes. Interestingly enough, at the expense of cholesterol. 